Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Dungeons & Dragons Ultimate Edition Trivial Pursuit. It's made by Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, and USAopoly. The game plays two to six players, takes roughly about an hour to play, and is for ages 12 and up. But basically anybody who has the knowledge of Dungeons & Dragons can sit down and play. The game is quite simple. You'll be moving around this board, attempting to answer trivia knowledge uh, based on the game Dungeons and & Dragons, and successfully gathering all of these little pegs into your character and getting back to the main center of the board. If you can do that before anybody else, you win the game. We'll talk about the setup, talk about how to play, and of course, my review. The setup for the game Dungeons & Dragons Ultimate Edition Trivial Pursuit is the same as most Trivial Pursuit games. Take the main game board out, place it in the middle of the table, get, gather each character one unique figurine from the choices that you have, which are going to be the gelatinous cube, mimic, uh, there's like a gorgon, a floating skull, an owlbear, so on and so forth. And make sure, yes, they're set right there in the middle. Then take the deck of cards, shuffle it up, and place it within reach of all players. You can form multiple decks if you would like, so that it's easier for players to reach. Last but not least is you'll be placing the tokens out somewhere within reach of all players and the die as well, and then you're ready to go. Playing the game is as simple as setting it up. When you begin the game, you'll have your character, you will roll this die here, and then you will move along the game board. You must move the number of spaces that the die has been rolled, it'll be between one and six, and you'll move one, two, three, four, and five. If you would like and you have the option to, you can move in any direction that you would like. Uh, when you finally stop on a location, it is going to have a color on it. The player to your left will take one of the cards from one of the decks and read the question portion of the color represented. In this game here, there's going to be multiple categories, magic and miscellany, history, monsters, dungeons and adventures, characters, and cosmology. And when they read the question to you, you have an opportunity to answer the question. After you answer, They'll check the back to see if you are correct. If you are correct, you'll be able to roll the die again and once again move along the game board. Whenever you answer a question correctly on any of the spokes of the wheel, these spaces here, you are going to gather one of the identified colors from the spoke. So if I get a green question right on the green spoke, I will take a green token here and I will slide it into my character's base and it will snap on in. And like I said, no matter what, as long as you roll and you answer the question correctly, you can then move again. And as you move, you'll be trying to go to each of the unique spokes that you have not already answered a question for and get that question right and once again go ahead and stick another token into your character's base. If you can get all of the spokes from each of the different sections of the board, each of the different colors and categories, your next objective is to move to the middle of the game board. You'll be rolling the die and you'll have to get exactly the number correct in order to hit that space. However, if you'd like to play an easier variant of the game or homebrew it for yourself, you can do that, which I'll talk about in my review. But as it stands, that's how you play the game. Roll, answer the question, continue if you're correct, and stop if you're not. The next player will take the turn after you, when you fail to answer a question, get all the spokes, move to the middle, and whoever has that successfully done is the winner. Dungeons & Dragons Ultimate Edition plays the same as any other Trivial Pursuit IP, with the unique difference of the theming, the different types of characters you'll be getting, and of course, the questions. All of these questions are going to be based on Dungeons & Dragons, and a lot of them will be based on the older versions of Dungeons & Dragons, the history, the lore, the monsters, the adventures, and all that kind of thing. You are going to be uh, basically just reading questions and having players answer them. This is a standard trivia game. Most people know what the, the Trivial Pursuit era of games is and how they work. This one here is really, really cool. You're going to be getting all of these cards here and each card is gonna have six questions and uh, they're gonna have six answers on the back. So with this huge stack of cards here, you're almost never going to run out of questions. There's a good like <laughs> six to seven inches of cards for a Dungeons and Dragons Trivial Pursuit. I had my friend sit down who knew D&D very well and play and we actually have a video Video that you can watch if you're interested in seeing how the game is played and the type of questions that are asked. Um, uh, but otherwise, if you are knowledgeable on D&D, &D, all the different types, there's the 
2E first edition, the types of things that involve Gary Gygax, the creator of the game, and of course the types of monsters. I'll just read a few of these off so you get an idea of what the questions are before I continue the review. What do flumps feed on? What icon is below the ampersand on the spine of the book version of the 2017 Tomb of Annihilation? In the Dungeons & Dragons animated series, who is the skilled acrobat who fights with a staff? So all kinds of different questions. I am not a D&D lorist, but I did sit down and play, and I was able to get questions correct. Now, of course, that being said, if you sit down with a bunch of people who don't know how to play D&D, this is going to be a terrible game for you because you're gonna get most of the questions wrong and the game is going to take way too long. However, if you get down with a bunch of D&D players who know the game, this is going to be a very exciting and fun experience. The game of Trivial Pursuit has been a long-standing game for a lot of reasons. People love doing trivia. They might like something simple and straightforward and they want to move on to the questions because that's all that this game is about is asking questions, answering questions, and really changing the game however you like. If you don't want to have to get exact numbers on your rolls, you don't have to do that. You can just simply say, okay, if you roll five, you can move up to five, you can go any way you want and you were trying to land on these guys. And if you land on these, it just becomes another roll again as opposed to a normal question. You don't have to get the exact number into the middle of the board if you don't want to. And I honestly suggest you house rule the game to make it quicker, make it so that you don't have to answer uh, a bunch of questions as well. Or you can have it so that players, when they win a certain number of times in a row, they stop. So they don't just keep, get to keep taking their turn over and over again. So that way people who are less knowledgeable in the type of game that you're playing, the type of uh, trivial pursuit because there's multitudes of these types of games it'll have more people have more turns more frequently now let's talk about the game design it is beautiful great design on the board all the different pieces of the different weapons on the board are all represented in DD lore all the characters as well some of the more popular characters like the gelatinous cube or the mimic box which is like a monster <laughs> uh, and then, what's the other one? Oh, the Owlbear, which you also find these in a lot of other fantasy type games, including World of Warcraft. And they just have like different names and different changes. As far as the miniatures go, they're beautiful. High quality, detailed plastic pieces. The way that you fit these little slices in of pizza into the base is great and it feels good. When they're slotted, they're nice and tight in there. And of course, the amount of cards that you get for the game is going to last you a long time. I'm guessing there's over 3,000 questions in this game. And so even if you get the same card a few times, you're not going to likely get the same question, which makes this game last throughout the ages. Uh, most of the questions are older. So if you're playing a new, 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 new versions of D&D or you don't know anything about the old stuff, or if you do a lot of homebrew, this might be a little bit challenging for you, but you're still gonna have a better knowledge than most people. If you want a challenging D&D &D trivia game that is represented with cool characters and a nice design with a ton of questions, then Trivial Pursuit Dungeons & Dragons is for you. For those of you who do not know what D&D &D is or how it functions or anything about fantasy lore, this is one to stay away from. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for Dungeons & Dragons Ultimate Edition Trivial Pursuit. If you're interested in this, go ahead and check out the link in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. You can also check our website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Every Wednesday we do a whatnot stream where we sell games and we sell them on the super cheap. Like I mean 40% off, 50% uh, off retail sometimes, as well as Sunday nights where we do a stream where we play games just like this one. In fact, you saw one of our streams if you watched the video that represented us playing this game. I did terrible. Actually, I did better than most people did, uh, but I suspect I do terrible at this. <laughs> you can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. And if you would like, you can join us every day, Monday through Friday, where we do videos. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to delving into the dungeon with you next time.